Hey, good morning, everybody. We're just going to be admitting people for a minute or two, and then I will start the presentation today on Knowledge Nomads and the Nervously Employed. So we'll just give it a minute or two for people to attend. Hey, people are still coming in the room. I'm Jim Fargo. We'll be starting in about one more minute. Glad to see a lot of familiar names uh, on one hand and on the other. I uh, wish you didn't have to be in here and that you'd be doing something fun, uh, possibly work. I will try to make this entertaining today and uh, cover some topics that I hope are important for you. Okay, Derek, you're unable to hear sound at the moment. Let me just see something here. My sound is on, uh, it might be on your end, look at your speakers. Okay. Can everyone else hear me? You could just put in the uh, question and answer and then I'm gonna get ready to start here. Okay, loud and clear, Lima Charlie. All righty. So we'll get cracking here. Okay, everyone, good morning. Uh, my name is Jim Fergal. I'm the facilitator of the Job Club, uh, our virtual Job Club now. And I'm also the manager of. Uh, job Seeker and Veteran Services uh, with WorkNet DuPage, and that's our website, worknetdupage.org. I'm going to go over some administrative announcements uh, before we get into the depth of the presentation, in case there's some new people on here. Uh, again, this is who I am. Uh, Javon Morris, uh, she's one of our workshop facilitators. She's on board here. In Good the morning. Q and A. Good morning. Uh, Jennifer Wegeman is a workshop facilitator. Uh, she won't be here today, uh, but the three of us uh, are involved in teaching the job search workshops. Uh, so uh, you'll frequently see me or uh, Jennifer, Javon. Uh, she's keeping my back uh, with the uh, questions and admitting people. Uh, and also does presentations as well. So a little bit about our organization. Uh, we are funded by the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. You may have heard it called the WIOA. It is a grant, so you do have to qualify for some of our programs. Uh, our Friday Job Club is open to the public. We start around 9 a.m. Uh, we do offer uh, job search workshops uh, for people who have qualified. Uh, we have training grants up to $10,000, and we have a layoff to launch workshop every Tuesday. 
uh, visit our website for the application to sign up at worknetdupage.org. I'll show you that page in a moment. And here's the moment. This is what you'll see. Uh, just uh, get to the Get Started form on our website at worknetdupage.org. That starts the process. Uh, we try to figure out how to qualify you to get in. Uh, don't let other people say you may or may not qualify. Please apply uh, and let our people uh, figure it out. Uh, when in doubt, apply. That's what I always say. So it's at Get Started. You can see it in the upper uh, right-hand corner of the screen and the little computer here. It says Get Started. And there's a questionnaire that you need to fill out. Our layoff to launch, work, uh, layoff to launch workshop, uh, we do that every Tuesday at 9.30. You can sign up uh, through our website as well. Uh, it talks about how you may qualify for grants up to $10,000 and still continue to receive unemployment. Uh, there's no need to pay that back. So that's every Tuesday at 9.30. Please go to our website, worknetdupage.org, so you can sign up for that. A lot of good info in there as well. Some things on Zoom etiquette, Zoom etiquette, I guess is the word to use. Uh, please be polite and courteous inside the uh, room. I don't have people uh, being vocal uh, just because uh, it uh, could get disruptive. Uh, so please go into the Q&A if you have questions. Our comments go into the Q&A. I will review those. I will stop periodically to answer questions. Uh, let's stay on topic today uh, about the, the topics. Of course, none of the bizarre comments or any type of inappropriate languages. Please mute all your microphones. And really, I just want to create an online presence here to help you and to help everyone else. And I noticed uh, people were already helping uh, everyone out by uh, letting people know where the speakers are on the screen. And that's what I want. You know, we're all in this uh, to help each other out. And I'm trying to provide you with information. If you have questions, if you need clarification, please feel free to use the Q&A to do that. So, this recording is going to be posted on our website, worknettopage.org. Uh, we're not going to send it out. We've been overwhelmed uh, with, with everything uh, that's going on right now. So, uh, this will be up as soon as possible, probably early next week, uh, because Zoom has to download the recording and we edit it. Uh, but it will be up there, as well as all of our other job club presentations. So uh, please go to our website, worknet2page.org. There's a lot of great content on there from previous speakers, uh, as well as uh, I think I've presented on uh, the resume. Uh, virtual interviews will be coming up. Uh, how to have visual aids, how to put together accomplishment statements. There's all sorts of great uh, content on our website. Again, go to worknet2page.org. All righty, let's start the presentation. Knowledge Nomads and the Nervously Employed. It's from a book by Richard Feller and Judy Wickert. And I stumbled upon this book. I was at a career conference for the National Career Development Association. I thought, wow, this is kind of an interesting book. And I started reading it and I said, oh my gosh, uh, he calls them knowledge nomads. Uh, the current buzzword is digital nomads, which I'll get into in a little bit. Uh, but it's really important, uh, especially in current times, to understand the concept of there's a difference between the old and the new methods of employment. I'll have this slide again at the end. Uh, again, Knowledge Nomads and the Nervously Employed, Richard Feller and Judy Wickert. 
You might have heard Free Agent Nation by Daniel Pink. Another great book, thick, but it has a lot of great content in it. The Way of the Ronin, uh, Writing the Waves of Change by Dr. Beverly Potter, uh, is actually a very similar book uh, to Knowledge Nomads in that uh, samurai, when they were uh, in between wars and the warlords didn't need them, were laid off and uh, let go. And so they wandered the countryside, uh, either improving their skills, uh, doing contract type of work as protection, uh, or teaching others. And so uh, the concept is <laughs> Ronin uh, actually means wave people. And in order to be a true samurai, you had to lose your position with a warlord seven times. That means you're laid off seven times and you get hired eight. And I feel like I'm a full samurai now in the job search arena. An interesting article I found on Forbes, I'll touch on this briefly, is The Five Types of Organizational Structures by Jacob Morgan. And this is just one article I found on digital nomad jobs. Just get Google digital nomad and you will find all sorts of information out there. It's overwhelming. I got a Rima paper already, uh, and that's not counting what I saved on my computer. But there's some great articles out there if you want to know what's going on and how to adjust to the new workplace. So let's start off talking about disruption. Uh, things happen. You've probably heard about disruptive innovation and you know, disrupting companies. Uh, and what disruption does, uh, it's gonna change uh, what happens in the marketplace. That's what I'm concerned about today, is the job search arena. Um, and it's changing the world of employment. You know, we've heard about globalization. We're all connected. A lot of you have worked on global teams, have traveled. Uh, I had one uh, gentleman in my workshops. Uh, he was traveling to six continents. He hadn't hit Antarctica yet. But I've had people in our workshops who've been in Antarctica working um, and communicating. I actually had the person in, uh, you may remember years ago, a doctor in Antarctica who had to operate on herself. Well, the, the person who was the network engineer keeping everything going has come through the workshops. Very interesting story. And also because technology has changed how we work. Uh, and certainly, uh, three months ago, I never would have dreamed of doing a job club like this. Of course, our knowledge, the speed of knowledge that's out there is increasing two or three fold every year. And the workplace is changing as well, obviously. So this is uh, some interesting facts that I found. Uh, they were interviewing um, a, a lady who's an entrepreneur. And the World Economic uh, Forum said that 75 million jobs will disappear by 2020. However, and this is the key point, 133 million will be created by innovation and specifically because of artificial intelligence and automation. So that's key. We're losing 75, but 133 new ones are being created. And what that means is we're going to have to change how we think. Now, Deloitte Insights said that the lifespan of skills is 18 months. That's pretty scary. So, you know, that means we're going to constantly be upgrading our skills. I have a friend who was a neurosurgeon, and he said, I, I have to constantly go to uh, workshops and learn new techniques probably every three or four months just to keep up with all the changes out there, uh, which is a good thing if, you know, if you have to go see a neurosurgeon because the doctors have to keep up with all of the technology uh, that's changing how they operate, literally. And H.P. Lovecraft says this, the oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. Boy, it just grips us, doesn't it? 
And the oldest and strongest fear is fear of the unknown. And, you know, when we're going into this pandemic and stuff, whew, a lot of fear. So the nervously employed. I couldn't resist. This is one of Jennifer's uh, favorite characters from uh, The Office. But the nervously employed, you know, we were conditioned eight to five wages to match our age, you know, it was 10,000, you know, for how, whatever decade you're in. There's very specific job descriptions, you know, it went line by line, this is what you're gonna do. It was pretty much a promotional ladder straight up, you know, and you earned your way up, uh, working through the ranks to get to the top. There was livable wages, a retirement, and pension at 65. So we had the illusion of security and in control. And I remember uh, probably dating myself, I think it was the early 70s with Doonesbury, when one of the fathers got laid off and the whole article was, you know, the comic strip for a while was how does that father deal with being laid off and the, the stigma of being in it because, you know, we thought we were guaranteed jobs. And what we were doing was we were trading our autonomy for material benefits and security. Again, we had corporate paternalism. They, Ma Bell was gonna take care of you. Kodak was one third of the uh, economy up in Rochester. They had special days when Kodak would give out bonuses. Uh, you, know, because, you know, when Kodak left that, you know, that Rochester was, ah! Individual identity, you, you lose that, you know, to serve the organization. Uh, you know, I have a black and white photo, but you may remember books or movies, The Man in the Gray Flannel Suit, or The Organization Man, and things like that. Uh, and, you know, you can see, you know, the secretaries, you know, everything was defined. There was mutual loyalty. You, as long as you were loyal to the company, the company was loyal to you. And you know there was group harmony. You know, as you know, there was no really individual expression. Uh, you know, you were considered a, a rogue if you, you know, were dissident against the plan. And again, the rewards were a steady paycheck, job security. Uh, you had a pension benefit, you got your gold watch when you retired, you had a nice house in the suburb, and you had a job for life. So they said. Now, knowledge nomads, digital nomads, uh, whatever name you wanna give them, independent contractors, consultants, freelancers, free agents, soloists, temps, and even micro businesses. You know, when I was reading Free Agent uh, Nation by Daniel Pink, you know, some of the people were like, you know, it's hard for me to be loyal to a company, uh, but I like providing services to a lot of different people. And they start these small little businesses, micro breweries, you know. So there's structural change. And again, this is from that Jacob Morgan. Uh, uh, you can go to his website, thefutureorganization.com, uh, but it's also in Forbes. You can just Google it. I have it at the end again. Uh, this was the traditional structure that we all, uh, most of us have grown up with, very hierarchical, military-like, all the information flowed downhill. And what that did was there was a chain of command. Everyone had their area of responsibility. Uh, you advance through the ranks as you got more experience. And sometimes if they were grooming people uh, for the corporate elite, they uh, those individuals, I know we had a college kid uh, with our youth program who uh, was hired by a big corporation and he was gonna spend a little time, in, you know, a little in advertising marketing, a little in sales, a little in uh, accounting, in the warehouse just so that he would get an overall view of the organization and how it works. The problem with this is the thing called silos. Uh, information got, might get stuck by uh, 
uh, certain levels of management, uh, certainly the bureaucracy, uh, the commo wasn't always shared, and you really, it wasn't encouraged for you to go talk to other people in other um, sections. You know, you might be disloyal if you left your department to go to another one. So th there was all this stuff going on there, very rigid. So as the economy began, began to change, uh, we moved to flatter organizations. Uh, there was a lot. Of, there's a lot more camo going back and forth. Uh, gives you a little quicker decision making. It doesn't take forever, as in a bureaucracy. Uh, there's more management flexibility, cross training, and there's also flexibility to adapt and uh, change and create. On the other hand, as they got rid of middle management which happens every so many years as people grow, as organizations grow, middle management grows, and a lot of the historical knowledge is lost. Uh, there's uncertain career paths. Uh, the, you know, I remember doing, reading a book on career lattice, look, moving left, moving right, all over the place. And also when, when, with this type of organization, and followed up by these, he calls them flat archies. Uh, sometimes they're horizontal, ad hoc. You may have been a manager there, but because you handled different projects and you're involved in different aspects, you became a jack of all trades, but not necessarily a master, is the perception by companies. So a lot of you, and this is the complaint I get a lot, uh, and some of you introduce yourselves to me as I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, because you're a generalist. And you had to be a generalist to survive uh, rather than a specialist. And, and what happened with the hierarchical is the longer you were there, you became very specialized. And this was also a problem with people with the tech com uh, companies who've been there 25, 30 years, is they became so specialized, they weren't keeping up with technology changes. And in flatter organizations, I believe you do, you have to keep up with the changes because they're happening so rapidly uh, and you are learning software uh, and new techniques quickly because you're adapting. And this gives the company uh, more ability to adapt, but you will also notice there's more communication uh, up and down the ladder. Teams are formed for specific projects. And, um, you know, some of these companies like Zappos and stuff actually uh, have helped, uh, you know, if someone comes up with an idea, they may form a special team, you know, get a team together, work on the idea, and then the company uh, would support it. Then you get to this, uh, this is something new, holocratic. Uh, organization. You have all, some people don't even have job titles. A lot of the gaming industry, uh, they say there's no one in charge. Uh, everyone kind of works together like a commune or something. Uh, but they're in teams or departments, but there's a lot of interaction. People come together from different departments to work on a project. And then after the project's over, they go back. It's kind of like a uh, I think one of the terms uh, Jacob Morgan used was like an amoeba. These organizations change their shape. But that's just a brief overview. So what's happening is as technology and the economic world is changing and becoming more rapid, in order to adapt to these changes and the speed of change is that companies are adopting getting away from the hierarchical if they want to survive into the more flexible organizational structures. Now, why knowledge nomads or digital nomads? So this is uh, from a McKinsey Global Institute workforce survey. Now this was 2018 before the pandemic. Uh, and this was pretty much across Europe and the United States. Uh, and the question was, with regards to contracting freelance and consulting workers, 
which of the following types of labor do you expect to be most important to your organization three years from now? Look at this, hiring temporary workers was 61%, using external contractors was 46%, and outsourcing agencies, you know, outsourcing human resources, outside uh, consulting, auditing, things like that. So, and, and that was, you know, two to th two years ago is when they gathered this data. And so what's happening with some of these organizations you, is you're gonna have a core uh, group of people that are in the organizations, but they're gonna hire temp workers and contractors to uh, take care of things. I remember my older son was interviewing for a supervisor in a warehouse down around Gary somewhere. And they were asking him about, you know, are you able to fire someone who's not doing the job? Uh, and what was happening, uh, which, you know, my son was like, this is crazy. Uh, they would only hire their warehouse workers for 89 days. And then they'd get, let them go and hire another group. And it, my, even my son, you know, he wasn't in the workforce long. He says, that's crazy because you're constantly retraining people. But the company, of course, you know, Everyone says, you know, doesn't want to pay the benefits. And, uh, but the supervisors above got benefits. So these are questions you have to ask is, what type of environment am I going into? And, and what's the organizational structure like? And, you know, how many temps are in there external? So this is going back to those uh, latter organizations I was talking about, is that the organization is becoming more adaptative, I guess would be the word to use, amoeba-like, depending on the situation. Maybe there's a time of year getting ready for Christmas, they're hiring more employees, temporary or contractors, and then boom, they're gone. And then we have the pandemic, okay? Changed the world, hasn't it? And because of this pandemic, it's pushing technology forward in unexpected ways. I mean, no one foresaw this coming. Uh, it came on the scene. Uh, there's very few people al alive who've been through the uh, through a global pandemic, and pretty much every company, every manager, every CEO is having to adapt on the spot and be flexible to this. But let's look at all the opportunities it has created. Uh, one of our staff has uh, uh, hearing issues, wears hearing aids, and when we're wearing masks, she can't understand us because the masks cover up our lips. She can't read our lips. So, uh, you know, our director <laughs> ordered masks from the Ukraine that has plastic over the lips so that she can read the lips. I, I mean, who thought of that stuff? And again, the global economy is you go to Etsy or someone to find something that someone's making. I mean, you read about these kids, you read about people making masks, uh, the thermometers. Um, we're working with a couple companies who have altered their whole manufacturing to make hand sanitizers. Uh, look at how uh, in, in the bottom center, uh, my wife's a nurse. She's had to work COVID a couple of times. Um, not, it's not her primary area of expertise. Uh, but they're pretty much gowned up, dressed up, face masks, all this stuff. Uh, and, and look at all the machinery around, all the technology. There's companies making these face shields, you know. So as this pandemic was accelerating, Companies were like, okay, our old line of business has changed. How quickly can we adapt and use our facilities for something that the uh, world needs right now? And your flexible companies are able to do that. Look at how the uh, workplace has changed. Uh, you got people going around now. I think uh, we're working with a program for cont contact uh, screeners, workers, we're wearing masks all the time. Look at how the restaurants adapted. Herbside, we're gonna deliver to you. Barbershops are slowly opening up. 
uh, testing procedures are now being implemented. You know, and uh, you know, I was listening to a doctor on the radio and he says, you know, we've constantly adopted the medicines, the testing techniques, and the longer we're doing this, the more we learn about the disease and how we can uh, come up with better testing uh, and better medicines. And, and then, uh, of course, you know, as all of us are on Zoom now, uh, those people have made a ton of money in the stock market. <laughs> the value of the company has like exponentially uh, increased. Uh, but now we have Zoom meetings. Uh, I never even heard of Microsoft Teams before, and, and we're on that. And, and I come back from knee surgery one week and was told, okay, we're going to close down. I had to learn how to record PowerPoints within a week, record our boot camp job search workshops. Once we were working from home, I learned Uber Conference, Microsoft Teams, got on Zoom, uh, and then we were looking at Skype, and thank God we stayed on Zoom, uh, because that was three platforms I was learning in, in two weeks, two and a half weeks. And that's going to be the key for all of us, is we have to learn and adapt constantly learn and constantly adapt to the changes. Now this was kind of interesting, was working from home. Uh, a global workforce analytics of 3,000 employees, they came up with 72% of employers, says, uh, tel telecommuters, remote workers said, as long as they have the resources at home to be successful, they feel they can be successful. And these are the right tools, skills, uh, resources, uh, and a nice area cut out at home. You know, I moved all over the house right now. You know, I was upstairs in my dining room and now I'm in my bunker in my basement. And then the 77%, 77% of respondents felt fully productive working from home. 77% uh, say they've gained back more time from unwanted interruptions. And 77% are satisfied with the flexibility they're afforded. And 69% are satisfied with their well being. Uh, when we talk with staff, uh, we found this out uh, as well as people are starting to become more comfortable working from home. We, we have 50% uh, working in the office, 50% working at home, and people are adapting. And they've also found uh, in a study by Life360 uh, that families, believe it or not, uh, were figuring out, oh, okay. Uh, we have to separate out, you know, we got the homeschooling going on um, or e-learning. Then uh, mom and dad, uh, you know, is in another area of the house doing work. Um, you know, and sometimes you got to be in separate rooms because you can't be Zooming at both, both at the same time doing meetings. Gets disruptive. But they also found that they were starting to get along better. Uh, and it also enhanced people start yeah, okay, you know, this remote work isn't as bad as it sounded before. So the whole workplace uh, has changed with the uh, pandemic. Now, since we're human and you get bombarded all the time, all the jobs that are going to be taken by robots and technology, is this fear of technological unemployment. And it's real. You know, we all have this fear. Again, the fear of the unknown. Um, I remember there was a bunch of us, uh, all facilitators of different job clubs getting together. How can we cooperate? How can we serve the community better? And then one of the uh, facilitators of a job club said, well, you know, we could use Zoom info and communicate. And everyone looked at her Zoom info. I think it was back in October or November of last year. And boom. Was there a profit, uh, you know? And here we are, we're all using Zoom to innovate and we have all had to learn it. Okay, the best investment you can make is in yourself. Lifelong learning, uh, getting certifications, degrees. Now they're even coming up with micro degrees, getting licenses. I think uh, Ellen Tolfer, 
uh, from Future Shock said, uh, the illiterate of the 21st century is the person who can't learn, unlearn, and relearn. And that's what we have to do. We're, we have to constantly upgrade our skills. So at this time, I'm going to shamelessly plug ourselves again, uh, that if you haven't or are not working with us, please apply again, uh, because some of the uh, what we fund is CDL license, uh, medical assistant, uh, Scrum Agile, uh, PMP, the latest and greatest in Microsoft, uh, Cisco. Uh, and those are just some of the things. Uh, mainly certifications to get you the skills you need to get back into the workforce as quickly as possible. So again, please join us Tuesdays at 930, sign up ahead of time so you can get in the program uh, because companies are hiring right now as well. So I just want you to know that. And then I think today the restaurants are opening up to limited capacity. So things are slowly getting back to normal. I think we moved into phase four in Illinois. So uh, now's the time to take care of yourself to be ready, uh, especially if the furloughs end, you, you, know, you could have learned new skills. Everything I've read has to do with this. We have to be able to navigate uncertainty. You know, the stock market, you know, it dove down. Now it's coming back up almost to the levels it was before. But for each of us, we have to look at control. What can we control and what can't we control? We can't control the economy, but we can control how we view the economy, what opportunities are there or I, how I can use this time to my advantage. What's your vision? Where do you want to go? What's your purpose? You know, the more experience you have, the more you learn about, wow, this is what I'm really good at. The other thing is risk, your ability to deal with risk. And, uh, you know, the majority of uh, people are risk adverse. I, I mean, entrepreneurs, yeah, we're going to get out there and dive in. But the internet has, uh, and this is what we'll, we'll be talking about today, is given opportunity to people to start branching out and trying different things. Again, I, I look at Etsy, I look at Amazon, uh, people uh, selling stuff on Amazon now. Uh, some risk, but not as much as if you were gonna open up a shop somewhere, uh, and then you get, you know, like some of these restaurants and small uh, businesses get wiped out. And the other thing is being able to deal with ambiguity. Not everything's cut and dried. And, and you know, certainly we want, I want to know what's going to happen. Uh, I can't tell you how many job seekers I've had, even myself and even my uh, two sons when they interview, even my wife. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to have a job. Uh, if I do take a new job, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, my younger son got hired just as this pandemic was was starting in sales and freight forwarding, which is almost dead right now. And he's plugging along trying to make sales, but it's uncertain. But he knows what he has to do every day. So he figures out, okay, you know, it's a little ambiguous right now, but I know that right now I'm developing relationships. So when this opens up, again, his vision. The other thing is developing uh, resilience and again, being able to adapt. I remember uh, talking to, uh, uh, there was a period of my life uh, where I was getting out of the military and transitioning into civilian life. Man, I was taking jobs, uh, getting laid off, uh, getting fired or whatever, like in sales, um, working for unemployment, getting laid off. And I was just like, wow. And I was talking to this uh, uh, corporate uh, human resource manager from Sony, and I was telling him uh, my journey, if you will. And he says, well, if anything, you're resilient. You keep bouncing back. Again, I go to back to the, the Ronin and the Samurai. Is, you know, you get knocked down seven, you get up eight. But the toughest part is getting up eight. 
And resilience, you know, you're not really born with that. It's something you have to do, okay? You have to develop it, as well as your ability, uh, as long as, you know, you have to adapt uh, to the changes that are going on. The other thing is the speed of change, the rate. And it, it's our un, inability to stay a pace of change that throws us into uncertainty and chaos. You know, if you haven't kept up, uh, you know, with um, technologically, and if you are in the tech world, the information technology world, and your skills are old, you know, next thing you know, oh my gosh, you know, what am I going to do? And then you get in the panic mode and panic gets in your head and you're worrying, spinning your wheels. Um, you, you know, it's like spinning your wheels in the snow. You're going nowhere uh, because it's all in your head. Where's my next job going to come from? How am I going to deal with this? So what's important, uh, again, as a nomad, uh, the nomads work for a company and then they move on. But they're looking at how you have to be an agile learner. You learn from everything. You, you have to look at the ability to embrace new ideas. And most people, as I said earlier, when we first heard of Zoom, we were like, ugh. And now we're all in it. Usually the people who come up with uh, new technologies, new ways of doing things are laughed at until they're proven that they work. And then everyone jumps on board and says, wow, this is a great idea. Why didn't we do this earlier? The other thing that's important is to uh, respect different perspectives of things. Uh, you know, there, you know, I certainly don't know at all. That's why I interact with uh, different people. I take information in from staff. I take information in from uh, uh, job seekers. I talk to employers. Uh, you know, my my son was uh, having an inspection on a house. I was asking the inspector. And the uh, real estate, well, what do you see happening in the housing market right now? You know, it's these little things because I want to know from on the ground. You know, not necessarily, you know, the newspapers aren't always covering everything uh, to give you a, a total perspective. So, uh, you know, do what you can to stay ahead of change. You got to be always uh, forward looking. So adults in transition, um, you know, they, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, <clears throat> you got to uh, you gotta learn change. You know, we're all learning new tricks right now. Change is normal, death, taxes, and change, three constants. Uh, but we need to develop uh, our emotional skills. And you are on this emotional roller coaster. You're up, you're down, you're left, you're right. The problem for American workers is we identify who we are with our job. And you have to define yourself as more than a job title. You know, you can be a father, mother, uh, son, brother, sister, uh, aunt, teacher, um, I don't know, volunteer. We all do different things. We all have different identities. There's also a paradox of giving up security in order to gain freedom. Uh, if I go back earlier, you know, we used to go be in organizations because we had security. We, you know, we wanted security, so we gave up our freedom. But now uh, it, it's kind of bizarre with different articles I was reading is you get more freedom by going around more knowledge and more capabilities, more talents, more abilities gives you freedom to go to different places, try different things. There's trade-offs, you know, you know, the workaholic, you know, we, you know, we get so involved and then the balance. Yesterday, as I was putting this together, you know, I'm in my bunker down here. I didn't even know time was going by. And, you know, finally I crawled upstairs around 4.30, I said, finally, I got it all done. Uh, is that workaholism? Is it balance? Well, I don't know. There's flow. That's certainly that. 
And that's going to be one of the things I want you to look at is moments of timelessness because it tells you what you are doing is what you're meant to do. And you have to see yourself as a consultant or free agent, you know, just like the pro sports players, free agents, you know, move around to different teams. Same for you. You're a consultant to the company. All jobs are temporary. All jobs are you know, learning experiences that you will use in the future, just as you're using your previous jobs and experiences to help you identify problems now. This is from an article I found on flexjobs.com. By the way, excellent website. It, it, you do have to pay to access the jobs, but there's a lot of great info on there for free. Uh, determine what you wanna do. Take some time, sit down, get a journal, you know, get, get an artist pad or something and start listing your skills. Yeah, not just your broad skills, but every little skill you have. Uh, and look at how you use those skills in each of those positions, which are transferable, which are job skills, what is, what's technology, what tools have you worked with? And you'll start noticing certain skills, there's a thread, certain skills have been used over and over again. Reach out to people, uh, seek support, especially if you're going to switch careers. Uh, you know, people say, well, how am I going to do this without, uh, uh, without the experience? I don't know, we just hired a counselor. She has so many different careers, <laughs> different paths. I said, you should be teaching the class on Friday uh, because she's done so many different things. Um, and I've noticed in class, we have people that have been in one industry and don't know how to change and do something new. And then I have other people who've been in so many different industries. They say, I don't know how to focus, you know? I said, well, the two of you talk to each other. Always consider getting more education, rebrand yourself. Uh, and that means updating uh, simple things like your email. If you have AOL and you're an in information technology, get rid of it. Go to Gmail. You should use Gmail for your, uh, for all of you, uh, for your uh, job search email right now. When's the last time you updated uh, your LinkedIn profile? Do you have a picture on there? Do you have a recent picture of you? And also rebrand yourself. Uh, and I know men have a, I don't know why, but we get into growing these beards, uh, especially as we get older. And, you know, I told this one guy, uh, he was in sales, he had a scrofty beard. And I said, you really should shave it off. And once he shaved it off, he looked 10 years younger and uh, he, he started getting interviews and then got a job offer. Uh, you know, so don't get attached to beards and superficial things. You know, if you got glasses, upgrade. Uh, to a trendy pair or something like that and test the waters you know it's like trying on shoes just well you know today I think I'll be a graphic artist well do you have experience what's it like to be a graphic artist uh, temp work volunteers see what it's like these are some of the best career fields to jump into uh, over 50 is administrative because there's a lot more is one of the uh, things that comes up is virtual assistant, uh, education and training, adjunct professors, writing. Uh, you're going to see some of this coming up here. Accounting and finance. You know, you can work for Robert Half part time. Medical and health. Uh, the gal who was their x ray tech working on uh, taking pictures of my niece. She made a transition around 40, 45. She was in logistics and just said, oh, I hated it. And finally, you know, I got laid off and I went back to school and I love being an x-ray tech. It's just, you got to take the risk and have courage doing it. And courage only occurs once you take the steps into it, once you start. Mortgage and real estate. The uh, inspector of the house uh, you know, I was talking to him before the real estate agent came. He had worked for the third largest bank in the world, some French bank, global teams. Oh, and he said, I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, you know, they offered me a severance. 
I, I hadn't been seeing my kids, the games and stuff like that. And I decided I was going to do something uh, that I like to do. And his wife was real as, in real estate, uh, linked him up with someone who does home inspections. He took the classes, got licensed or certified, whatever they have to do. And he says, I set my own hours now. Uh, and, I'm, you know, I, I know my kids, kind of, because they're teenagers and now they don't want to see them. But at least he's got balance back. And that's what happens with, um, you know, knowledge nomads, digital nomads, consultants, whatever you want to call it, free agents, is you get control of your life again. Same thing with real estate agents. He says, I book all my stuff during the week so I can have Sunday free. These are different types of, you know, they hear portfolio careers. It's kind of like a tapestry, you know, putting a rug together. Different eclectic employment services. You can be full-time employee, part-time, volunteer, a lot of contract, a lot of different project work, hobbies come in, all of this stuff. Now, knowledge nomads. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Working globally, 24-7, 365, anywhere in the world that has Wi-Fi. You add value anytime, anywhere. You have to maximize technology, be able to ne negotiate databases. And knowledge nomads, uh, digital nomads, consultants, free agents, whatever you want to call yourself, they come in, they help the company, but they're really looking at how can I develop my own ideas? How can I continually develop my skill sets? And how can I take advantage of learning opportunities? A lot of people you know, have told me in, in job search, no one else did this, and I decided to try it. I have to admit, I was very reluctant to jump into Zoom, but I figured eh, I'll be the point person. I'll be the guinea pig. Try it all out. You know, because you got to learn. All of us do. Oops, I'm sorry. I kind of screwed up here. I clicked the thing. Okay, where are we? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, in the Q and A, just let me know if you can see my screen. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see here. I'll, I'll take some questions at this time. Which VPMs are compatible with Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Cisco WebEx, and Skype? I, I'm sorry, I don't know what a VPN is, Charles. Uh, writing is not a good career field for DuPage County. That is why I'm here. Frank, I'm going to show you uh, with FlexJobs and Guru.com that they actually have writing opportunities. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, okay, so you can see my screen again. Okay, good. Okay. Back in full screen mode. Okay. I apologize. My mouse is crazy over here. Uh, what the trade, uh, Charles, uh, what the trade of Microsoft Teams versus Zoom, Zoom meetings? Well, Microsoft Teams is only used internally within a company, whereas Zoom meetings, just like Skype, uh, can be used uh, externally. So if we were going to do a video interview or remote interview, we would set that up with Zoom. Virtual private network. Okay, thank you, everybody. Yeah, it's how people uh, work remote in their companies. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Raul, I'm a senior. Uh, any ideas on how to develop more knowledge in computers? Yeah. People's Resource Center, 
Uh, there's online classes at College DuPage. Uh, go to Microsoft Office. They have uh, uh, tutorials that you can do. Uh, talk to your kids. I had to give my phone over to my real estate kid's real estate agent because my screen blacked out. And uh, my son last night was doing something. I said, show me, teach me, so I'm not constantly asking you. That's how you learn, is make, you have to do it. Uh, teams can be used the same as Zoom, depends on your license and what you can afford. Yeah, same with Zoom. You know, they advertise you can have 10,000 people if you pay, and that's what we thought we'd get with 10,000 people, but we're limited to 100, because you have to have the gold standard and pay buku bucks to have 10,000 people on here. Uh, is Tuesday's laid off meeting relevant to people? This is Chris, not on unemployment. Yes. Is it a repeat of information each week or unique each week? No, it's a, uh, it's the same information presented each week. Uh, it's for people who are new. Uh, again, you don't, there's a lot of very, a lot of different ways to qualify for the grant. When in doubt, attend the meeting and find out about us and find out about the process, okay? Thank you, Frank. Uh, YouTube is also a great free enterprise for computers. A lot of YouTube videos are out there. That's how I was learning about Zoom, uh, recording PowerPoints, um, you know, a lot of great stuff out there. Okay, let me continue on here. So uh, tools to be a nomad is Wi-Fi hotspot, good solid pair of earbuds with microphone, portable char charger, meeting apps like Zoom, Skype, communication app like Slack, project management app like Trello. Uh, you can go on here, see all this. I heard Trello from one of our presenters, Paul Cameron, he was very big into it. That's how he sets up his day. So check it out. So this call will be overwhelming at once. Do I jump into multiple, what do they call it? Income streams at once. Well, let's just focus first on doing one thing really well uh, and you know, finding full-time work. You know, if you're working, great. Uh, if you're not, then you can experiment a little. If you're switching careers, uh, or even just to make ends meet, which would then bring us to, there's freelance, part-time work, or even project work. And even part-time work, I remember uh, doing a workshop for some, people in welfare to work all of them were working looking in for full-time jobs in warehouse and uh, manufacturing which they hated because I could tell by their expressions but once I asked them what they really wanted this one lady wanted to be a floral designer I said well why work in a warehouse why don't you go to Amlings or uh, you know any floral shop around uh, a cemetery just to be a cashier because you're gonna to learn to be a floral designer. You're gonna learn the ins and outs because you become a sponge. Uh, and also project work, part-time, freelance, you get to look inside a lot of different companies. Uh, it is interviewing, you're interviewing them to see, well, is this place I wanna work or is this a place I don't? And they're interviewing you. Other things to look at is your hobby. I'm lucky every Halloween I get to incorporate my hobby into my uh, job search uh, Halloween story boot camp uh, and volunteer as well. Uh, Sharon, if you could put your uh, question, comment in a question form here. Yes, uh, LinkedIn Learning is also a resource. Uh, and also uh, Coursera is on uh, work, Illinois WorkNet DuPage. Some attendee just put that on here. Uh, 
So let's look at stability, flexibility, and uncertainty. And these are questions you have to ask yourself because depending on your how you answer these questions depends whether you want to be an employee or independent contractor. Do you crave a variety of work, having multiple interests, you know, that you want to use and want to pursue, continually pursue using your talents? Are you comfortable breaking into new turf, new territory? Uncertainty, you know, walking in where angels fear to go. Uh, do you want more control over when and where you do your work? Do you want more than one stream of income? You know, because you have to know what your tolerance is for risk and how you want to deal with uncertainty. Again, it goes back to the nervously employed want stability uh, versus flexibility. But again, you have to look at the organizations and the structure. You might have a lot of flexibility uh, by being members of different teams at different times within one of these flat, flatter companies. This is the difference between an employee and an independent contractor. Employees get paid by the hour salary. Contractors get uh, when the project is completed. You're using the employer's tools, you use your own. The employee is gonna work for one employer works for multiple uh, clients as the independent contractor. You know, you can read through this, but what I want you to remember, and, and this is what you're looking at, is one, you're cont it's like you have a lot of stuff going on. It's kind of like job search as an independent contractor. You're looking for your next gig. Once you get that gig, that job, you're working on that job, but you still have to keep the search going for your next gig, and you have to line them up. When some contract work being done, the guy says, gosh, you know, I'm trying to organize the equipment to get this thing done, I'm finishing up a job here, and yet I've got seven other estimates that I'm doing. You know, So what's your comfort level with that type of daily activity? You have to look at what's the pluses and the minuses. The advantages are you get flexibility. You can work out of your house. You don't have to commute, save on gas, uh, save on the maintenance of your car, better productivity. You can work from anywhere. You can, you know, you see when Starbucks opens up again or Panera, you'll see people working out of there. Sometimes there's less stress working from home or remotely. The disadvantages are, um, I guess the less stress is from all the office politics and stuff. Uh, the disadvantages are you have a lack of social life. Uh, so that's incumbent upon you to reach out digitally. Uh, you have to have time management and self-discipline. You have to get yourself organized. What am I gonna do at certain times of day? Uh, and the disadvantages are you, you lack, uh, there is a lack of office politics. So. If you like the drama, then working nomadically doesn't help you remotely. Uh, knowledge you'll manage constantly ask and grasp ideas, okay? Constantly experimenting, trying different things. They, they accept risks. They're willing to ask questions. Uh, they also share information, share ideas. That's the big thing is, you know, it used to be uh, teachers and artists didn't share work, and now I'm seeing more and more, share it, get it out there. That's how everyone learns. It's how you're learning. You know, as an artist, you know, in my hobby, I'm going to other websites to find how people do things, and they're all sharing ideas on techniques. Ask questions. Questions give you, give you knowledge. Skills that you're gonna need. Uh, mathematics, uh, databases, um, you got to constantly keep up your technical skills. You have to be able to communicate in writing, uh, in person, on the phone. You're constantly building relationships. You have to collaborate with different people, different cultures. I, I was talking to someone from Nokia who had a team in France and a team in China. You know, you got different time zones, you have different cultures, you have different ways of communication. 
you're, you're constantly doing that. Be creative, brainstorming, your cultural sensitivity, you know, manage diverse employees, you know, a lot of those who have people who have worked with global teams and even here in your office, you know, you have a diversity of ethnicities, uh, backgrounds, things like that. Businesses, you know, any anytime, anywhere, as long as there's a good uh, infrastructure, good bandwidth, international airports, skilled workforce, higher education, capital investment, quality of life, all of which Chicago has. And the interesting thing is, if you read the blast headlines is whenever there's a tax or something coming in is all the companies are leaving Illinois. All people are leaving Illinois. Okay. So I learned when I did some recruiting is change your perspective, not who's leaving, who's staying and who's expanding or who's moving in. And that's why I encourage you to read, uh, local news like uh, the business ledger cranes uh, there's a lot of uh, I don't know, industry week a lot of great stuff out there to find out what the trends are who's moving in the area look at Elk Grove Village is buying up uh, territory because they're putting a tech industrial park in or tech park up there You can dial locally, but you got to think globally. Uh, we've had some people on these uh, webinars uh, from Africa, from Sweden, all over places of the world. You don't know how far out you reach now. And that's the beauty of the internet. If you're going to do like Etsy or something on Amazon, you could be shipping all over the world. So here is guru.com. Uh, and you can, uh, this is for employers to find freelancers and freelancers to find gigs. Here's programming and development, administrative. Here's writing and translation, uh, Frank. Uh, design and art, business and finance, sales and marketing. Uh, ironically, with translation, I was reading an article in the business ledger about a company that does translation services that has these machines to do it. But the hardest thing for machines is the nuances of when humans speak. Uh, accents or colloquialisms and things like that. So uh, you, you still need uh, humans to uh, be translators. So that's guru.com. Another one, here's flexjobs.com. I'm sorry. Now, I know you have to pay for flex jobs, but I want you to look at these are all the different types of jobs that are out there, part-time gigs. Um, you can find jobs by location, surprising jobs, featured employer jobs, researching gig jobs, how flex jobs works, they have some great job search articles on there, how to find gig jobs, what companies are hiring gig employees, uh, and job search resources. This I found on Tech Republic this week, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, and this is from Flex Jobs. These are 18 companies right now hiring remote workers. Adobe, Amazon, Ancestry.com, Capital One. Coinbase, I don't know what Lambda School is, MasterCard, Microsoft, Nationwide Insurance, Nielsen, Salesforce, Shopify, Slack, Square, Twitter, Upwork, Zillow. 18 companies right there that are hiring uh, remote workers. So I believe with the change in economy and with technology, you're going to see a lot more remote work than we have in the past. Benefits of technology. 
Well, look at this. I, I found this picture. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, technology improves things. Technology does replace, but technology makes things better, generally. You know, it's just like we went from horse and buggy to now we're sending people up to, back into space again and trying to land on Mars. Uh, I kind of find this funny. You know, look at how we eventually straight up and now we're hunched over our computers. <laughs> what humans want, humans design and humans adapt. And, you know, we can't go to Mars right now, but we have a rover up there. Uh, we can't go to the bottom of the Marianas Trench in the uh, Pacific Ocean, but we can send a, a rover down there. And I've also had a guy who worked on the space shuttle and the rover that uh, James Cameron used to find the Titanic. He didn't have a college degree. He, he had a high school degree, but he just had the technical skills, the, the ability to uh, tinker, I guess would be the word to use, play with things, explore, take risks. Look at drones now. They're all over the place. This uh, little thing over here with the construction worker, this machine actually eats concrete. But I, I don't know how, but it eats concrete. Remember when the, the $15 an hour was coming in? How many restaurants went to uh, uh, this menu? You know, click on the menu to order at your table. I was someplace, I think at Chili's with my dad a couple of years ago. And we're waiting and waiting on the server. And finally, someone I stopped someone. They said, oh, you can order from the table here. I was, what? That was new. I want you to realize that uh, technology augments and doesn't replace the human skills and, and, and judgment. Um, this is the collider. I think it's in Basel or somewhere, Switzerland. Uh, but look at there's humans that are working with it. And, you know, here is medically, and this is a picture of someone's heart beating, you know? So we don't have x-ray vision to see inside what the heart's doing, but now we've developed technology for that. Manufacturing is the same way. Robots are making things more efficient, but there's jobs developed because of robotics. Now they're calling collaborative, it's called collaborative robotics, or robots. So you wanna be at the intersection of change. Uh, again, space is the next frontier. But also, the ocean, we, we don't know much about the ocean. There's discoveries happening all the time. Of course, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, uh, manufacturing, big data, human engineering. Uh, unfortunately, because of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, robotics have really come into play to help veterans who have lost limbs, uh, a couple of years ago, I was reading about this company developed an exoskeleton for a veteran who had uh, was uh, a quadriplegic. And uh, this veteran was able to walk for the first time and move arms and eat by himself, I believe. Uh, so you see this. Some of the jobs uh, in the future are gonna be sp and s space exploration, sea exploration, energy, the environment, medicine, health, education, business law, entertainment, robotics. Of course, cybersecurity, virtual assistants, avatar designers, uh, 3D food printers, 3D printing is becoming very big. When I'm on manufacturing websites, they're talking about how to implement 3D privacy managers. Um, there's also, uh, gosh, uh, social media lawyers because of uh, content put on the uh, site. Do you own it? Uh, smart dust programmers, there's nano technologists, uh, data, social networks, content managers. So uh, 
I thought I'd end this with a little joke here. You know, couldn't you just leave that here until we're sure the new system works, you know, before we get rid of all the humans, right? So let me see what's in the questions here. Uh, so let's go back here. Teams, teams, teams. Uh, Laurie, I have consultancy, but I am not as active as I could be. How do I find a mentor? Uh, ask people, uh, you know, when you're in these type of forums, if anyone has done consulting work. Uh, I would say if you go into different job clubs, um, when you're at different places, when uh, I think the thing is you have to talk to people and ask questions. Uh, I know that's hard to do when we're virtual, but as things are opening up, uh, talk to people. I think that's very important. Uh, it, it just, I don't know if there's specifically, I, I'm sure there's meetups out there. Uh, I, what I would do, if you're really interested in this, is uh, use LinkedIn and post something and says, you know, I, I want to get back into consulting and, uh, you know, I'm looking for a mentor or someone, you know, or look up people that have consulting in their profile. Okay. Yes, you will find this presentation uh, at worknetdupage.org. I will show that in a little bit. Uh, these are, are just some references. Uh, again, Knowledge Nomads and the Nervously Employed, Free Agent Nation by Daniel Pink, uh, The Way of the Ronin, Riding the Waves of Change, Deborah e. Potter, Five Types of Organizations. This website, brightnomad.net, has some great uh, jobs there. This is where you'll find the recording. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, okay. Uh, contact your counselors. Uh, those of you who are with us, you have to maintain monthly contact with your counselors. Uh, you can email them nomad302 to let them know that you attended the sessions today. Uh, part of the grant is that you maintain contact with your counselors monthly. We are offering these workshops. After every workshop, we do have a code, uh, and that fulfills your part of the grant by maintaining contact with your counselor. You've attended, uh, you, this is actually part of the grant, believe it or not, is uh, these job clubs or workshops that we offer. The other thing is important is uh, to let us know when you land a job. One is encourages others, uh, encourages staff, and it's also how we gauge what's going on there. There's a lot of interviewing going on right now. I know you don't think so, but there is. Um, and uh, several people at my younger son's former company have been interviewing and have been moving to other companies while this is all going on in freight forwarding when there's not a lot of freight forwarding going on. Go figure. Um, so it's little things like that that are encouraging. It also allows us to serve more people. So the way the grant works is we have to, there's something like 24 different metrics that we have to meet. If we miss one, we get on probation uh, for one year. Uh, if we miss one again, you know, two years, and then, we're, then we lose the grant. So we've always, I, I've been here 25 years, we've always made 70%. But where this allows us to serve more money is our ROI, return on investment, is people that get jobs. What type of job and what's the salary? Because our boss is Congress. We have to report back to Congress because that's who authorizes the grant. How many people get jobs and whether the program is working? Uh, and, and so, 
as long as I've been here 25 years, we have always made 80%, which gives us incentive monies to serve more people. So that I'm presenting here today, that you are able to receive any sort of training and stuff is because people ahead of you have uh, gotten jobs and reported back to us. So it's very important, uh, not just for us, but, uh, but for other people, few people in the future. And we wanna keep this program going uh, because Congress uh, you know, has their own way of viewing things. They're up in their ivory towers up there in the beltway. And you know, I've gone to a few local meetings, you know, town halls, and I don't know. I'll just leave it at that. They don't always know what's going on. Uh, you raised your hand. Uh, okay. If, if you have your hand raised, go into Q&A. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I can do for you. Okay, coming up, job clubs for the future. So, July 3rd, next Friday, no job club, it's a holiday. Enjoy the 4th, shoot off a firework or two. Uh, I put the month of July down so you can plan. Uh, we have Connor Kaneen, how social media can affect your job search on the 10th. The 17th, I will be presenting on virtual and video interviews, how to set up uh, for one, how to test the equipment, how to prepare yourself. Uh, and I'll actually show you my uh, Zoom station. I have uh, Dr. Uh, Malater coming in, uh, navigating the right of change. And then I have uh, Hurry Up and Wait, by Louisa Bueller, uh, dealing with this uh, new economy. Again, you can actually start uh, signing up for worknetdupage.org, and you can sign up now. These have been selling out because we're limited on seats. So uh, if you're interested in any of these, you can sign up today on the website. Well, finding part-time or contract work count towards uh, we owe a financing. Uh, not that I know of, we're looking, we're really based on full-time work. Uh, I put this out there just because you need to know what's happening in the future. And I don't know if Congress really knows what's, how the economy is changing. Uh, but this will, because we are going to follow up with people. We want to see how long people stay in jobs. Uh, we'll do follow up every quarter, uh, and this year, you know, either by email or by phone, we'll be sending information out because Congress is looking at tenure as well. As bizarre as it sounds, uh, they're trying to see what's happening in the economy, and this is one of the indicators for Congress: is how many people get jobs, what type of jobs, do they get benefits, and then how long is it in there? Because hopefully they're using this information to develop legislation and things like that and, and, and fund other programs. Uh, okay, are there any other questions that you may have? Again, WorkNet DuPage. Uh, Okay. Uh, okay, any other comments in the uh, box here? Okay, do what, what happens if and when you, you get recalled from furlough? How does it affect unemployment? You go back, you, you, you let them know that you went back to work and 
Uh, if you get furloughed again, then you just go back to unemployment and reopen your claim. But when you certify, you have to let them know that you went back to work. I'm thinking the incentive monies are going to disappear. Uh, Susan, you just said, Jim, I'm not seeing everything here. Uh, okay. No questions. Okay, so if there's not any other questions, a reminder is go to our website early next week, either late Monday or Tuesday, uh, and you will find this webinar on there. You can replay it, you can pause it, you can see uh, uh, any resources uh, that may be on there. Uh, Charles says, variability of hours over the next months impact UI. It's not your hours so much as it may be uh, your gross income. These are questions that you need to pose to the unemployment office uh, because there's more details on that. You know, it's just like uh, I can tell you basic things, but I really don't know everything. Just like unemployment doesn't know everything about us, you need to ask those questions. Uh, with that, Coursera, uh, if you go to WorkNet DuPage, uh, Delbert, if you go to WorkNet DuPage, no, I'm sorry, IllinoisWorkNet.com, uh, the governor had, had announced this, uh, that there are some Coursera courses that are for free and others uh, that cost. Same thing with LinkedIn Learning, which used to be Linda. All righty. If there's nothing else, I am going to end the meeting. I wish you all the best, and I'll see you in two weeks. Okay, thank you, bye.